during the annual council of the Seventh-day Adventist Church held in October at the denomination's headquarters in Silver Spring, Maryland, United States, a report was presented on the 3 a.m. or Three Angels Messages project. These messages, the very heart of the Adventist movement, focused on the theme of worship, the messages of Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 to 12, and contain God's last warnings to humanity. It's a call to recognize the sovereignty of God as the creator of the world and the only one worthy of praise and worship. The Adventist Church is working to spread these messages all over the world and has even created resources for children. We're happy to uh, inform you that the Children's Ministry Department has developed two resources to help children understand the three angels' messages as found in Revelation 14. In 2020, we developed a series of three uh, animations with subtitles to help meet the needs of the hearing impaired. We hope eventually to use that and uh, to add the sign language in there for those hearing impaired children. But they are interesting and cute little uh, animations that illustrate the story about God and truth. And, and our second series of uh, the resource that we have done is a Bible study set called Three Angels and You, written by Randy Fischel. It is a series of eight Bible studies, uh, well illustrated with activities and also uh, interesting thought questions that help our children know uh, more about this. The three angelic messages are also disseminated through the training of believers and digital content in text, audio, and video. Some Christians think that you can believe in God as creator and the process of evolution. They believe that God has set the process of evolution in motion, but this doesn't make sense. So the first angel is calling us to reevaluate what we believe. John recognizes how Jesus, the embodiment of love, took the form of a bloody sacrifice and broke the power of sin, freeing us to serve and be saved by God. The more time we spend with Christ, the more we will want to become like Him. And because His ways are higher than our ways, we will naturally see our brokenness more and more. And among the outreach initiatives is the launching of Centers of Influence, one of them is located near Fifth Avenue in New York. The city is a symbol of the work that should be carried out in all parts of the world. What an impressive thing it is to be at a very high level on one of the higher buildings in New York City and be able to look out at the complex teeming millions, literally millions of people in the metropolitan New York area, whether it's in New Jersey, Manhattan, Queens, Bronx, Brooklyn, Staten Island, Long Island. This whole area is an amazing complex of people. And that is exactly what Jesus intends for us to reach, people. And that's why Jesus asks us to be involved with the mission to the cities. Having everybody working together, total member involvement. A number of us have been involved in passing out literature on the streets of New York, inviting people to come to lectures that truly can help them with eternal values and eternity itself. Uh, sidewalk evangelism, only one little part of so many things that God wants people to do in the cities for the cities and to understand that there is a complex understanding of out of the city, in the city, working together to help those centers of influence within the city. New York is a symbol. That's what the spirit of prophecy is indicating. A symbol as to how God intends for his people to work all the large cities, mission to the cities. Whatever city you're in, whatever city you're close to, don't ignore it. Realize the people of the city are the objective that God has in store for you to touch and bring to the foot of the cross. What a blessing to be able to be part of Christ's ministry, helping people physically, mentally, socially, and spiritually, and then pointing them 
to the powerful three angels messages, the final warning that Jesus is coming. He's gonna take us to a beautiful city. No crime, violence, difficulty. What a beautiful future we all have. We have a beautiful group here that's been helping in the cities. Some continue to help right here in New York. Some of us have just been visiting. But New York, of course, for me, holds a very dear spot. This is the area I began my ministry. and continues to be a source of great uh, focus for me in the ministry that we have for people.